The secret to earning instant respect in your career is asking yourself, how do I want person X to feel after my interaction with them? And then work backwards from that feeling to identify your approach. But there are levels to this because respect doesn't just come with a firm handshake. So here's the three-step formula that I've used to thrive over my 10-year career. Level one is make them feel connected to you. This emotional goal works really well to build rapport within the first five minutes of conversation, particularly at networking events. Try to spot what Miami Heat basketball star Jimmy Butler does when he hears about a man who comforts passengers from a malfunctioning plane. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's that, special. That's, He'd have to calm me down too. If that happened to me, I'd be one of the people that, was, that would be crying. I'm so scared <laughs> to fly that he would have had to hug me and <laughs> yeah, rub my back because I'm, I'm, I'm scared of flying, so yeah. Kudos to you, brother. Thank you, bro. Come on. Giving someone a genuine compliment is one of the easier ways to instantly connect with anyone. And there are two nonverbal cues that stick out to me. The first is react with your face. Don't fake an expression, but rather accentuate how you really feel. And my favorite way to practice expressiveness is the reaction video technique. Pretend like you're filming a reaction video to the next YouTube video that you watch. And anytime you feel something, make sure to show that feeling so that you will make others feel what you feel. The second is to make contact, whether it's a fist bump or placing your left hand over their shoulder while shaking their hand firmly or touching them lightly on their arm. Make contact when you've either identified common ground with the other person or want to show appreciation or respect for that person. The fact that, you know, you understand um, that people were scared and you were able to be there for them, basketball has nothing to be. That's, that's real clutchiness right there to be able to comfort your people. Like, I respect that so much. Notice how Jimmy Butler's locking eye contact directly with the person that he's complimenting. And he mentioned something specific that that person did that got his respect. A simple example could be like, I really appreciate how responsive you've been. Expecting an email reply from anyone within an hour is rare, but something I can rely on with you. Level two is to make them feel eager to learn more about you. This emotional goal works really well with interviews or particularly meeting new clients. And you can make them feel this Way typically within the first 15 minutes of conversation. Now I call this the triple threat. What are the three words that person X would use to describe you when talking about you to someone else? For example, for an interview, your goal is to identify three words that naturally overlap with you as well as the role or the company's values. When talking to an executive, your goal is for that executive to speak about you in the three words that you ideally identify with to other executives. See if you can spot Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy's triple threat when he's asked why he's running for president. I am worried, Margaret, that we are in the middle of this national identity crisis where my generation in particular, our generation, we're hungry for purpose and meaning and identity. And yet we hunger to be part of something bigger than ourselves, yet we can't even answer what it means to be an American. Right away, the two key words that jump out to me are purpose-driven and relatable when it comes to Vivek. I think that loss of identity is responsible for a lot of our economic stagnation. It's part of what's actually even behind the loss of our fortitude on the global stage. And I think that I actually have a vision of what it means to be a citizen of this country because I have lived the true American dream and I am worried that will not exist for the next generation unless we do something about it. And another word that jumps out is concerned. The key is to share just enough, but not too much to get that person asking themselves how or what or why. For example, for Vivek, it's what do you believe is causing the national identity crisis? Why is the national identity crisis a cause for such systemic problems in our country? Or how did you specifically live the American dream? Now, a key trait that I want people to remember me by, especially during interviews, is entrepreneurial. So I've often told this story. One of the more energizing moments of my career was founding an ed tech startup. I have loved being able to build something from the ground up, set the vision, inspire a team to carry out that vision, and serve an unmet need for customers, and I'm looking for the next opportunity where I can truly make that role my own and help take a company from zero to one. Level three, make them feel excited to work with you. This emotional goal is typically achieved within the first 30 minutes of conversation. See if you can spot how Don Draper turns a skeptic into a believer during his advertising pitch. Every woman wants choices. 
But in the end, none wants to be one of a hundred in a box. She's unique. She makes the choices and she's chosen him. She wants to tell the world he's mine. He belongs to me, not you. She marks her man with her lips. He is her possession. You've given every girl that wears your lipstick the gift of total ownership. Sit down. It all boils down to two things. The first is be willing to walk away from an opportunity if you're not satisfied. And the second is to connect the opportunity to a core need that only you can provide. Don Draper has such conviction in his beliefs that he's literally ready to walk out if they would not accept his offer. And he relates the lipstick brand to a core desire, which is female empowerment over her man. In an interview context, here's what you could say. If you're looking for someone who's here to clock in from nine to five, satisfy the job requirements, exactly as they're written and agree to the status quo, then I'm not your guy. But if you want someone who is willing to make this role his own, push our team to think bigger, and challenge even those more senior than me with thoughtful questions, which is what I presumed when I saw this opportunity, then I'm confident you won't find a better fit. Another tactic that I found really successful is the consultative selling approach. Any business opportunity can be found by identifying the overlap between customer value and business value. And the only way to really identify that overlap is to ask questions that uncover the other side's core needs. Open AI is a very mission-driven company, right. right? I mean, it's a company that is formed with the foundational idea that, look, the nonprofit at the end of the day right. is in control of this technology so that it can benefit the world. And they're very, very driven by it. Anybody who joins uh, their mission joins for that mission. And so it was very important for Sam and his team that they found a partner who understood that, right? And so that's why I, we were comfortable with it. In fact, to me, one of my dreams is the only reason why I want to work in information technology, I want to work at Microsoft, is to really be part of that democ democratizing force. Any partnership, even as large as Microsoft and OpenAI's, starts with the core question, what does success look like to you if we were to partner? So instead of launching into a pitch about yourself, I encourage people to give quick context about who you are and what you do within the first 30 seconds and then immediately immediately ask that crucial question. And once you get them to start talking, it'll lead to a conversation about how you both can reverse engineer that success together. This can lead to a natural conversation about things like identifying common core values, audience fits, timelines, and complementarity of expertise. But what do you think is the ultimate secret to earning respect in your career? Let me know in the comments below. I believe that if you can get anyone to feel how you want them to feel, that's the ultimate superpower that'll accelerate your career. But unfortunately, I've seen many people trip up on this because they make these four crucial mistakes. Check out what they are and what you can do about them right here.